Welcome back to Kitchen 143. I am your host, Michelle Aventajado, and I am so excited to share some of the things that I really love in this episode. Before Holy Week, we talked about all things traditional Italian. We had some of our friends, some of our Italian chefs join us and teach us some new dishes and um, talk to us about finding quality ingredients here in Manila, how um, Filipinos have now, you know, educated themselves more in terms of their demand for Italian products and what they enjoy. So Nino, you guys know my husband, when I met him, I actually couldn't wait for him to meet the Italian side of my family. So for those of you that are just tuning in for the first time, I am Italian American and I am Filipina. My mom is Filipina. My dad is second generation Italian born in New York. Um, so my great grandfather emigrated from Sicily, came through Ellis Island with my great grandmother, my grandmother, my Nana. She was the first generation, the first child that was born um, in the Bronx where they lived. So my aunt Annie was her older sister and she was born in Sicily. But when they came over, my Nana was the first of um, the siblings that was born in New York. So I have an Uncle Sonny, an Uncle Polly, an Uncle Michael. No, I don't have an Uncle Whispers, but my grandma, my grandfather's name was Skinny Mike. So um, these little nuances and these differences, of course, I find interesting learning about Italian traditions, Italian dishes, and how, of course, my family, when they came over to New York, just changed things a little bit. Today, I am really excited to chat with Roberto Fazzini of Ital Food, home cook Nadine Howell, mixologist Ian Osilio, and pastry um, and pastry chef Ken and Crystal Sison of Mama Lou's about how they've taken the Italian cuisine and how they provide that for um, clients, customers, and of course, even their families when they want to serve up some Italian love. Of course, as always, you have to be sure to watch out for the quiz the cook questions. We again, always five winners from Premier Wines and Spirits. We'll have three kits for Aperol spirit, spritz kits, and then we'll have two kits that will go out for Campari spritz kits. Um, you'll also have some fresh pasta made by Nadine and pizza dough as well from Chef Kin. You'll get to try his limoncello tiramisu from Ital Food. You'll have a beautiful antipasti kit that you could make a beautiful platter at home. Um, you'll also get a Mama Lou's gift certificate for 1,000 pesos, and you will have three months access from Philippine Italian Association to their learning platform, just in case you wanted to educate yourself a little bit more about Italian, cu Italian culture, music, and of course, even language. If you want to enroll in some of their courses, you can do that too. Of course, as always with the winners, we must have a Metro Manila address. We want to see you share the live. Remember, hashtag sharing is caring. And um, if you don't live in Metro Manila, you can certainly share the love, the kitchen love, the Italian kitchen love with your friends, family, and um, anyone in between. Okay, so we are broadcasting live from today's, uh, we are broadcasting live today from Rappler's Facebook page and the Mama and Manila page. So we're also live on YouTube and Twitter. Um, so feel free to go ahead and message us, leave us comments if you have questions. But right now, I am so excited to welcome Roberto uh, Fazzini from Ital Food and also Nadine from Made Fresh by Made Pasta, Made Fresh by Nadine. Hello. Hi, Roberto and Nadine. How are you? Hello. Doing really good. Hi. 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 Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I am so excited for you guys to share a little bit of your kitchen love and your stories um, of how much Italian food means to you. And of course, well, let's start. Um, Roberto, yeah. we know um, you're obviously not Filipino. <laughs> you're from, we, we figured out that you're from Italy. What brought you to Manila and 
you know, what happened? Why did you decide to open Ital Food? Well, as I said, I came here in 1978. That was about 44 kilos ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in construction company, I came for a national power corporation and a power plant in Laguna. And I stayed in construction for up to 1993, more or less. Then I was about to repatriate back to Italy. My wife decided to start up a restaurant. So, so we changed, we changed our mind and uh, we said, all right, we, we try to, she, she's like a good cook and she loves it kind of food. So and we opened a restaurant. In this restaurant, I met uh, uh, an Italian who convinced me to ask me one day, why don't we import something from uh, Parmalat? Parmalat is an uh, Italian. Parma. Yes, the mm. And I told him, uh, you know, I, I used to deal with the concrete, uh, sand, uh, <laughs> <in> bars. <laughs> now he wanted to deal with the flour and bread. <laughs> anyway, he convinced me and we started it. To make it short, after one year he left, so I was left alone and I, I, I was asking if I could, should I continue or, or I quit? And uh, I put it over for several nights. <laughs> and then I decided, okay, I will continue myself. And uh, here we are again in, in 2022. Yes. yes, and you're still here with an expansive product list. Of course, some people might not even know the restaurants and hotels that they're dining in are um, supplied by with your products. Um, so it was your wife who actually said, let's stay and let's do this. Let's do food. Yeah, with my half, my half, we opened up in a restaurant that later on became uh, L'Opera. I don't know if you are familiar with L'Opera. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I love L'Opera. Yes. We, we sold the L'Opera to them. I was uh, their partner for a little time and then I quit definitely because I, I concentrated in uh, distribution and importing more from Italy. So the beginning was very, very, very hard. I was about to quit because it's uh, very difficult. Uh, even because of that. people were not yet uh, used to a certain kind of product. And the mistake uh, I, I used to make is to import what I like. But what I like, not necessarily, is what Filipino likes. You know? Right, right. So you, have to, you, know, you, have to, you have to follow the trend, you have to follow the, you have to be patient, and uh, sooner, in fact, sooner, very soon, Filipino get used to uh, a lot of products. Yes, I think your patience did pay off. Um, Nadine, I know that you actually, when we were chatting, you were sharing some of the products that you use as well. And we figured out that they're Roberto's products too. Tell us about yeah, the products that you use. That's right. And thank goodness for you not giving up because I use your flour to make my fresh pasta. And um, my favorite, my current dry pasta favorite are the shells that I get from you as well. Conchiglia. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. What is your favorite pasta? My favorite pasta? I'm so boring. I love spaghetti. I love spaghetti okay. for everything. <laughs> I, I actually love penne. Probably penne is my favorite. I And when growing up, um, we actually had pasta every Sunday. I probably had pasta four nights a week, not just on Sunday. Um, but we had uh, meatballs on Sunday. So this is like a tradition in our house. Mom would make a big pot of meatballs and sausage and brujol and neck bones. And that was Sunday dinner. Sunday dinner usually started at 3 p.m and would go all the way until like five or six. But I always preferred the ziti. Um, and maybe that's also probably because my dad preferred more of the macaroni shapes and not the long noodles as much. So, Roberto, what's your favorite pasta? Oh, I like what kind of pasta. It depends on the recipe. Some goes well with the spaghetti, the long pasta. And the recipe is better with the short pasta. It is in regatta, yeah. Uh, if you have, for example, uh, carbonara, uh, you better use spaghetti. Yes. Uh, Amatriciana, it can be with, uh, with penne rigata. Okay. 
Okay, so you would serve it with penne also. Okay, so. Yeah, spaghetti and penne are the most common uh, sold among the pasta shapes. Yeah. Well, I actually was also surprised when I was looking through your product list of all the different specialty pastas. So, like, there's pastas. Nadine, I'm sure you know the difference between like the regular pastas and then the pastas made with semolina flour, right? Okay. So there is yes. a big difference in those two different types of pastas. What would you use? What kind of sauce, Roberto, would you enjoy with the semolina pasta? That, that pasta is from Garniano. I don't know if you're familiar. Garniano is uh, an outskirt of Naples where the pasta was all started out. Uh, it, it's super, super pasta. It's the best pasta. It's better than the cake or better than the marina. It is also very expensive. Pasta. Yes. What's the best of this pasta? I would say a gimmick, a gimmick sauce, like wild boar. Yes. Uh, Faison. Yeah. Uh, and the likes. We tell some of these sauces. I'll, I'll send you. I know you have already the pasta, right? Yes, I'll send, I have the pasta. I'll send you both of you, uh, Raoul. You cook. Yes, please. <laughs> With this pasta. Oh my goodness, that sounds delicious. <laughs> change your life. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for the change. So I know um, we talked about favorite pastas. How about favorite antipasto? Nadine, like what's your? I'm a big eater of cheese and coconuts. So logically, wow. Parma ham. Parma ham. It is a very good Parma ham. Yes, San Daniel as well is very good. Uh, uh, salami, we have uh, even in Italian food, we have a big variety of salami. We have salami Milano, we have a Napoli, we have a salami Doca. Yes. Uh, uh, we, we have, uh, yeah, that's good, that's fine. I mean, yeah, so you, you can probably add to this plate some olives if you only put some green olives. Yes. Or you can put some calabata or some uh, tajaske or the olives from Genoa. Yes, Ooh. I love olives too. Yes, yeah. they're very really good. So, fun so, fact, um, Nino didn't like olives when we first got together, and now he loves olives. So year after years of being married to an Italian-American who puts olives in, like, everything, <laughs> he now loves olives. Nadine, what's your favorite antipasto? I love prosciutto um, and olives. <laughs> As I mentioned, yeah. We have a coppa, yeah. it's, it's very good. Mortadella, I mean, these days, the cold cuts of the pool. I mean, uh, I love mortadella as well. I feel like it yeah. might be underrated. It's delicious. <laughs> me too. It took me a while to actually like mortadella. I was more of like a salami and a prosciutto girl as well. I preferred um, before growing up. So, Roberto, I don't know if I shared with you, my mother worked for the Italian Trade Commission in New York. So a lot of the products that came into New York, both food and wine, she knew many of the producers and um, the distributors, right? So I was very excited when, you know, we had a leg of San Daniela at our wedding. We had a wheel of Parmigiano at our wedding, which was also quite a while ago. But of course, this is my comfort. And with all of your products, I was so excited to create an antipasto platter so that we could show everybody, the viewers, just how easy it is to throw something together. So for me, an antipasto platter actually is a great light lunch for me or even brunch. Um, I don't need something to follow. It's antipasto, the antipasto actually means it's before, right? It's the first course that you would have. A lot of times I can fill myself up on just this already. That Same. coupled with, <laughs> Right? Yeah. I just like to taste everything. And then the bruschetta, which of course we need fantastic olive oil, right? Extra virgin olive oil whenever you're making anything like this with the tomatoes and- It's um, very healthy. It's also very healthy. My grandmother used to actually use it for all different kinds of purposes. My grandmother would use it for skin, for hair, um, you know, for all, and she lived with us growing up, so um, I miss her. But I am excited to show you guys what I made with some of the meats and the cheeses. So the meats, um, we have uh, prosciutto, salami, Milano, also capicola. I also used for the cheeses. Um, we can actually share the video 
And um, while we're sharing the video, I'm gonna see where everybody is signing in from. So some of the cheeses that Roberto um, Ital Food brings in, of course, there's provolone, there, um, I was able to incorporate Parmigiano Reggiano into the platter. Um, also, some, I'm drawing a blank. I have to look at the cheese again. There was also Fontina, and um, I think I said provolone already, right? And the Parmigiano. So here I, I thought to make this dish or to make this platter just kind of more fresh and summery, I wanted to make bruschetta. Typically, again, the bread that you would use for this would be a semolina bread. Roberto, have you found a semolina baker that makes semolina bread here? I haven't found one. Um, there are some hotels uh, that they do good uh, yes, I'm not sure. So that semolina bread is usually what dad would get also from the deli. So I haven't actually seen it. So I'm going to look out for it now in some of the hotels. But here, all I did was chop the red ripe plum tomatoes, um, put some uh, minced garlic, right? So just a little bit of minced garlic. The key here is the fresh basil, um, just a, a little bit of balsamic vinegar. And then of course the, the extra virgin olive oil. So when you're making this, you can make this ahead of time. You saw for this meal, I actually just grilled, I roasted the vegetables because we live in a condo. I don't have a grill. Um, I toasted the baguette, rubbed it with some fresh garlic. That's the key. A little bit of olive oil as well on the bread. And then of course, a little bit of olive oil in the tomatoes <clears throat> as well top it on top of your your bread um, and it's you know we let that sit for a little while while we prepare the antipasti plate so just cutting up the cheeses in different sizes and having a variety so this one is the parmigiano reggiano and for those of you that are familiar with that cheese this one is the fontal so it's like a fontina soft and then there's the provolone. So the different types of cheeses, it's nice to mix them because when you're having the different meats and the different cheeses, it's nice to kind of jump from flavor to flavor. So this is the capicola, the salami milano. I actually made some giardinera uh, earlier in the week, served it with some olives. And actually this was lunch on Sunday. <laughs> Very healthy, probably 600 calories, 800 calories. That's okay. It's Sunday. It's the Lord's Day. <laughs> calories I, don't count. I would eat this every day, actually, you know. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. So, um, you guys who are watching, I want to say hello because we didn't even get a chance to say hello. We have lots of our regular viewers who are here, we have Gabrielle, Sarabia, Erica, Castillo one, hello dear, you're back again, Rochelle, Luigi Padilla, hello. If you guys have any questions for Nadine or questions for Roberto about some of the Italian products, you can go ahead and leave them in the chat, in the comment section, and we'll of course answer them. Um, Binangonan, home bakers and cooks, you guys are here again. I'm so glad that you're joining us. Hopefully you will be inspired by the um, the Italian dishes that we're preparing and sharing. So hello, everyone. Be sure to go ahead and leave us a message where you're signing in from. We want to see where you are and we want to say hello. Hi, Alexis. Hi, Kath. Hi, Steph. Are you guys ready for a quiz the cook question? Ooh, yes. Let's do it. I think I think the viewers are ready. So before we do that, let's go ahead and show them what they will be winning as well. So from Premier Wines and Spirits, you'll either receive an Aperol spritz kit or a Campari spritz kit. So you guys will get to make your own drinks at home. You'll also receive fresh pasta and pizza dough by Nadine. You'll have a limoncello tiramisu from Chef Kin. And from Ital Food, you'll get a whole antipasti kit you'll get to make an antipasto platter, um, an antipasti platter for your own family that you will enjoy. 
from Mama Lou's. You'll also get a gift certificate that you can claim in one of their branches. And from the Philippine Italian Association, you will have three months access to the e-learning platform. Of course, we want you to know that we want everybody to join, but the address we will ship to has to be in Metro Manila. So if you guys are watching and you want to share the kitchen love, the Italian kitchen love, with your friends, relatives, boyfriends, girlfriends, cousins, whoever you would like to share it with in Metro Manila, you can do that. Um, okay, remember that you must have shared the Facebook live stream on your own page. Make sure it's set to public so we can see it. And of course, for this question, since we are Kitchen 143, 14344, I love you very much. The first person to answer correctly will win the first set of prizes from our partners. Okay, Roberto, could you please read our question for us? Okay. Why and when did Roberto start the Ital Food Company? So if you guys were paying attention, you would have known that Roberto was thinking about going home and then decided not to because his lovely wife decided that um, she would like to stay and maybe show some, you know, some of the Filipinos all the different foods they were missing out on from Italy. So guys, I think we have lots of winners, lots of lots of answers, but one winner you guys were so so super fast. That was okay. fast. I'm this surprised. Super fast. <laughs> yeah, it, everyone's being um, attentive. Yes, well, say they do. So, um, Nadine, you'll see actually as each question they get more and more competitive. <laughs> and everybody really pays attention because they know that we ask, you know, questions that are pertinent. Of course, we want you to pay attention. We want to we want you to learn something new. And of course, we want you to try all the different foods and the different products that we um, are talking about on the show. So it looks like we have a winner. Um, of when. So I think, I think we have, you guys are all answering really fast. That's like hundreds of answers already so fast. Um, someone also said, Sol Benito, you're very close. And Sol Benito, I think, is it. There we go. Uh, so, Nadine, for the products that you use, tell us about, before we announce the winner, tell us about, um, you know, what you use, what you make, and what has inspired you also to, you know, to join us for this Italian episode. <laughs> sure. Um, so I use, aside from the uh, semolina flour that I showed earlier that I get from Ital Food, uh, that actually, the semolina dough I make without eggs. So I just use water, a little bit of salt, and the semolina. I make cav cavatelli out of that. Uh, if you're, yes, Roberto is nodding his head in approval. That's good. So uh, I love the texture of this pasta shape. Um, super unique. And then I also make egg pasta dough with double zero flour. So just eggs um, and little bit of salt and double zero, so yeah. And I make filled pastas as well and the pizza dough. Yeah. Okay, so those, um, but let's talk, I like that Roberto was nodding his head because I feel like because this is the Italian episode and because Roberto is our Italian guest, we need his approval. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> 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 I seem to just live in Italy for a very long time and learn as much as I can, including the language. <laughs> but rather, uh, Nadine, you mentioned Cavatelli. I mean, uh, not everybody, everybody knows that the shape here in the Philippines. Yeah, I think I might be the only person who sells Cavatelli <laughs> locally. <laughs> Yes. Um, and I hope to make more pasta shapes with the semolina dough, like gusiate. Am I saying that right? I hope I'm saying that right. 
Which one? Orequete. Orequete, yes, yes. It's so hard to find orequete here. I actually like when I see it, I stock it and then I leave it in. I put, I'll put it in the fridge because you either see it or you don't. Like you'll see right. it and you won't see it for months. Yes, right. Correct. I'm working hard and practicing how to make it properly <laughs> with a knife. If you're familiar with how it's made, handmade. So. I'm not familiar with how it's handmade, but I do enjoy watching your videos because it's so meditative. Roberto, you should actually, yeah, if you've seen any of Nadine's videos, it really feels like a meditation when she's making her pasta. I think we are okay to announce the winner. Um, and there it is. Okay, so our winner for the first Quiz the Cook question is Sol Benito where he mentioned it, um, Roberto started in 1993 because he left construction and his wife loves Italian food. So I think that's the right answer. Thank you so much. So you guys, Sol, you and your family will have a whole feast of Italian products to enjoy. You'll even have some spritz that you can make to celebrate if you're celebrating anything. So Roberto, before you leave us, I know you have to go. I know you have lots of work to do. You were, you're quite a busy man. Please tell us where everyone can buy and source the products that we, you know, that we shared today and that you'll be sharing with everyone who wins the quiz, the cook questions as well. I know that I could see them in SNR and some other stores as well. Well, uh, in our office, we have also a second floor. We have a, a small showroom. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, well, you can so, see all, all the products that you need. A and that's in Makati. Yes, it's in, uh, in Metropolitan Avenue, mm -hmm. 1008 Expo Craft Building, Metropolitan Avenue, Makati. Fantastic. So they can come visit the showroom. They can see the products. You know, you guys have probably seen the products in the grocery stores. This Beretta brand, this is pancetta. I'll be making vodka sauce soon. Um, yeah. so this Beretta brand, actually, you can see it in the grocery stores. And um, I've seen it at SNR, Restan's, Landmark, uh, where else? All day supermarket, I've seen it. And I know you can also find the products in Metro Mart. Nadine, that's where you get your flour? Yes, usually, but I think I'm going to come and uh, bother Roberto one of these days and visit. Yeah, come to visit us. We'll have a nice espresso. Yes, sounds and good to me. You can, can see I the come? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, Michelle. <laughs> Fantastic. So we will you be can see also other cold cuts and cheeses that uh, you, you see on your paper, but then you can see live, you know. Yes. It, it's always nice to feel and touch everything and you yes. know, be able to bring it home. Of course, I'm that type of person too. So thank you so much, Roberto, for joining us. And of course, for Intel Food partnering with us for this episode. Um, and I hope to see you again soon. Very soon, I hope so. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Ciao. Okay, so, ciao. So Nadine. Let's talk about your pasta making. I know we talked a little bit about your ingredients and um, where you're sourcing them and the different types of pasta that you enjoy making. Um, but when did you first fall in love with pasta? Um, well, like many people, we eat pasta at a very, very young age. So I fell in love with pasta since I was a very small child. Um, but when I started making fresh pasta myself was in 2008, uh, 2006. Um, I went to culinary school right out of high school. And um, I made sure to earmark the day that we were going to make fresh pasta because I love pasta so much. And I wanted to be sure that I knew how to make it myself. Um, and from that point on, I just started making it for special occasions usually. Um, and during the pandemic, that's when I got to really go in on my uh, fresh pasta adventure. <laughs> So, and it's such an adventure because I actually, I found you on Instagram through one of my other foodie friends who actually, so Sabrina Go, I think has been yes. ordering Agnolotti from you. And when I saw what she posted, I started stalking you. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if you realize, but 
you know, the, the, the video. So tell everyone your Instagram handle in case they want to go follow now. Um, but right. I just go ahead. Oh, it's Nadine R. Howell on Instagram. Right. So I started following Nadine and I was mesmerized by how relaxing the videos were that she would put together um, of the pasta that she was sharing and selling to people on Instagram. So I think this is the part that I can definitely say is the blessing or the silver lining in, you know, through the pandemic. I know, you know, you and I were talking before we came on of, of the different businesses and of course how so many businesses have suffered through this, but what a blessing for us to be able to try your homemade pasta <laughs> because of this. So we talked right. about our favorite pastas um, to eat and you talked about also how some of the pastas that you like to make, um, so um, what would be your favorite pasta to serve to your family? Well, oh my gosh, how can I choose one? <laughs> well, my go-to, um, and I find that it's such a good crowd pleaser, is one that you're going to make very, very soon, the vodka pasta. Um, I love a good a la vodka sauce. I think, um, you know, if people like something creamy or tomato-based, it just... It's great for everybody and it goes with all kinds of pasta shapes as well. So if you have spaghetti at home or, you know, even fresh pasta. It's versatile. Very versatile. Um, yeah. And I love vongole. I love actually very simple pasta sauces. Yes. Vongole and uh, just olive oil based sauces are great too. Yeah. So I think that's also like key to talk about when we're talking about Italian food that so many if as long as you have really great ingredients and like fresh ingredients too like fresh tomatoes of course are, is so much better but um it makes such a difference and even the simplest of ingredients you could have like three ingredients and a delicious dish exactly and the ingredients speak for itself you don't have to do you hardly have to do anything to make it delicious. So that's what I love about Italian cooking as well. Right, it's so simple. No, there's a trinity. There's garlic, there's onions, there's tomatoes, kind of yeah. like Filipino food, but in a different way, right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, talking about delicious, um, let's, you prepared a video for us. You oh, yes. shared also, so let's, can you walk us through what you sure. prepared? So, so guys, we'll share. Um, Nadine's video here. Right. In this video, I'm making a lasagna with the lasagna sheets that I make. So I also have this available on um, through my Instagram when I do post my um, order forms. So I'm just layering a thin layer of bechamel at the very bottom. And generally, when you're working with fresh pasta, um, you can cook the noodles beforehand or the sheets beforehand or you can actually layer it directly without cooking it first. Just make sure that your sauce is a little bit more um, watered down than you normally prepare it. So I layered on a meat sauce here and then another layer of pasta and more bechamel. And it's really as simple as that. I also make ricotta. So this is ricotta I'm layering. Oh my gosh, you make ricotta too? Yes. Yeah, I do. It's actually really simple. <laughs> um, and a lot of people get surprised at how simple it is to make cheese. Yes, ricotta. The, right? the, the fresh cheeses are, very, are so much easier now. So I'm intrigued. Right. You're layering now, but you did mention that since the pasta was fresh, you didn't have to boil it. Right, so you can choose to just layer it on directly um, because technically it's hydrated already. It's not dry right. pasta. Right. Um, but I do cover it for to bake for 30 minutes, thereabouts, depending on the size of the lasagna that you're making. Right. Um, and the nice thing is I'm just trimming the edges. The nice thing about baking uh, fresh pasta this way is you get nice crispy edges that are really so different from uh, dry pasta sheets. I'm just portioning it out. So this is a yes. serving for me. I will definitely have a large <laughs> serving. I could finish that serving as well. I'm not shy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
I agree. Whenever we have lasagna, we all kind of fight over the crispy edges. Yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> is it a thing? Guys, is it a thing for everyone watching? Do you like the crispy edges of the lasagna? Yay or nay? Let us know. If you, if you haven't tried it, I think you might be missing out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. And we want to know, inquiring minds want to know if you guys like crispy edges or not. And if... Yeah. I haven't tried them yet. I am sure you will try them now. Okay, so Nadine, I think we're ready for our next quiz the cook question. So guys, remember, um, we do try our best to make sure we see the comments as they come in. And you know, there's still four more chances to win. So go ahead and make sure that you um, for this one, it's the fourth person to win, fourth person to answer correctly, right? One, four, three, four, four. Okay, so today, this is the second question. Up for grabs for this Quiz the Cook question. As you guys know, we have lots of goodies in store. From Premier Wines and Spirits, you will either receive an Aperol Spritz Kit or a Campari Spritz Kit. Um, fresh pasta made by Nadine, as well as some pizza dough. So she's sharing with you tagliatelle, agnolotti, corn and ricotta agnolotti. Yes. And um, some Neapolitan pizza dough. So I will actually be cooking these as soon as we're done. Mm -hmm. um, Chef Ken is also sharing a limoncello, uh, limoncello tiramisu. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. I sliced the little. The rest is in the fridge. Um, you'll also receive an antipasti kit from Ital Food. You'll receive a, a thousand peso just gift certificate that you can go claim in any of the 12 Mamalu's branches. And from Philippine Italian Association, you will have three months access to their e-learning platform. So guys, if you're really into Italian food like Nadine and I, of course, or even my kids who wanted to learn Italian because it's from their roots, um, you could take uh, lessons. They also have translation services. Um, they also have an Italian library. Um, just, you know, our last episode, they actually had an Italian film festival, which everyone had access to because it was free. There were like eight Italian movies dubbed, um, not dubbed, subbed in English. So if you were interested in Italian films, you could have seen those as well. They have that every year. So um, you can be on the lookout for that next year. Remember that you must live in Metro Manila. You must share the live stream. And we are picking commenter number four. Nadine, do you want to read our next question? Sure. All righty. Okay. When did Nadine's love for pasta start? Okay, so now if you were paying attention, you would know um, when, of course, we all love pasta from a young age, but Nadine did share when she fell in love with pasta. And I think you even, um, Nadine, we were talking earlier before we came on cam about your pasta maker, because I was telling you about my son right. and his pasta maker. Right, so this over here is still the same uh, pasta maker that I use to roll out my sheets. Um, and I got it as a 19th birthday gift. That's all I wanted for my birthday. <laughs> my mom got it for me. I love it. I yeah. love it. And it's still working. And now it's give. It's like a gift that keeps on giving. Thanks, mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mom, if you're watching. <laughs> I hope you're watching. Hi. <laughs> Okay, we do have a winner. So um, congratulations, Gregory Laida. He answered correctly with 2006. You will get to try lots of Italian goodies from all of our partners. Um, be sure to pay attention because our social media team will be reaching out to you for your address and your phone number in Metro Manila so that we can deliver your products to you. Okay, Nadine, let's welcome another lady on screen with us, Crystal Sison. So I am excited. Hi, Crystal, how are you? Hi, Hi Nadine and Michelle. Thank you for having me in your show. I'm so excited to see you again. We've we've worked together before and I'm, I'm just happy that we get to see each other, even if we're not in the same kitchen 
we're in. <laughs> it's okay because we get to spend time together. Um, I know you have a love for Italian food and it you know, goes way back for you as well, just like Nadine and myself. Um, tell us about Mama Lou's. Who is Mama Lou? Okay. Um, so Mama Lou's is named after my mom. Uh, her name is Malou. And uh, my mom and my dad uh, started the restaurant business. And uh, we go back um, 2010. Uh, we opened our first restaurant in uh, our old house. So for those that, uh, for our loyal guests, uh, they know they know about our house that's located in the corner inside BF Homes. Yes. And the story behind that is my parents were trying to sell that house. So it's in a corner, but it's in the middle of nowhere. There are no other restaurants. Um, but we have that house and we were trying to sell it for five years. And my mom had the brilliant idea of uh, converting it into a restaurant so uh, finally my my dad um agreed to my mom's idea so um, we opened uh 2010 uh there so my family would uh my family lived upstairs for about uh, a little over a year while we were having the restaurant so like a typical country in, in italy so Oh, how nice. And you know what? There's a common denominator here. So it was your mom who was inspired to open the restaurant the same way Roberto's wife wanted to do the same thing. I'm seeing a common thread here. The women here and the women <laughs> on the screen, I am seeing a common thread. So Mama Lou's um, beyond, so Nino and I, we lived in Alabang for a while and we know the restaurant, we know the corner um, and we visited quite a few of your different branches. Tell us about um, how the pandemic has been for you, because I know lots of people had to also pivot and do different things. Um, but Mama Lou's, tell us how you guys managed and what has come out of it. Okay. Um, of course, uh, everybody knows, especially um, the restaurant business um, is really, really challenging. Um, we were, I I'm, I'm very proud to say that um, we were, of course, our we were considered essential. So um, we just had to be able to provide um, the platform where they could order. So, so that would be through our website and um, also through Facebook. So um, that brought out a lot of great things for us as well. So we tried to look and um, we tried to just stay optimistic despite all of the challenges. We've had to close some restaurants um, temporarily, especially those that were serving mostly the offices. So that was that was tough, uh, especially for our team. Um, so what the great things that the, the pandemic brought out uh, from from for us for our family is like like um, we we will share with you we were all of our our packaging. So before we weren't really into delivery. So Mamalus is really known for um, that uh, homey uh, ambiance and really dining in there, uh, getting the full Italian experience. And so it was, uh, it was very tough, yeah. But um, I'm happy that now our guests have also become um, uh, used to ordering. I'm sure you guys yes. uh, are used to ordering yeah. all the time. Um, but I'm, I'm, still, I'm still delighted. I, I feel very relieved every time. Um, of course, we see people dining out more now. Yes. And it's still different, um, but I'm glad that you know, we're, we're still able to offer pizza and pasta even for delivery and not just for dining. So, right. 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 Fantastic. Um, and so I'm so glad that you guys were able to provide that platform for everyone. I've used it as well. Um, I want to read some of our comments because someone said, Time Tejada said, I love Mama Lou's. Elizabeth Tarimon says, love Mama Lou's. And then someone said, Lo, um, L-O said, I, who doesn't love Mama Lou's? Big smiley face. So everybody loves Mama Lou's, but everybody loves Mama Lou's. And you know what? We also like a drink every now and then. Can we welcome, <laughs> Crystal, don't go anywhere. We're going to welcome Ian on cam so we can also talk about the drinks that go with our Italian food. Um, Crystal, did you get your drinks already? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, I got mine. 
Okay, we have it. Great. Cheers. Okay, guys. Cheers, we are guys. ready. Cheers. Chin chin. Just right. Hmm. Perfect. Okay, Ian, tell us about um, Premier Wines and Spirits, but more importantly about Campari and um, Aperol, because I'm, I'm drinking Aperol today. What are you guys drinking? Because some of us got Aperol, some of us got Campari. I got Aperol. Okay. Campari. All right. Ooh, <laughs> so you're starting it a little bit more um, on the bitter, bitter side, Crystal. Cheers. Okay. So yep. Ian, I know you're going to tell us a little bit about both brands. Yep. Let me just uh, share my screen. Okay. While he's sharing his screen, I will um, share a couple of other comments. Mate Rachelle Mateo says, we love Mama Lou's too. Mark Ebo is saying, what can you say about the Pinoy version of spaghetti? Okay, Mark, we have to take that up after Campari and Aperol, but we will talk about that. <laughs> okay, Ian, we're ready. Yep, I have my screen up. Let me know if you guys are able to see it. We can't see it. Let's try again. And while you're trying again, I'm going to look at some of the other comments because I think we have some big Mama Lou's fans. Guys, yeah. there are still three more chances to win. So make sure you're paying attention. And okay. Michelle, I'd like to give a shout out to Smile. Uh, sure. She says um, her or his son is celebrating his 10th birthday tonight. So please send us a message via Facebook and we'd love to make it extra special for your son. Aw, that's so sweet, Crystal. You're going to be so <laughs> I know where I'm celebrating my birthday this year. <laughs> <laughs> When's the birthday, Nadine? I'm invited, right? Yeah. We're all going to Crystal's house. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so like you're just visiting your friend's home. That is the feeling that we want all of our guests to have. So you're yeah. always welcome. And and it really is that way whenever we have visited, actually. So um, for those of you guys who haven't yet visited Mama Lou's, we see that a lot of the viewers here are very familiar with Mama Lou's. So um, it's really nice to see. Time to have that is saying, are we invited to Nadine? <laughs> oh, go. No. <laughs> That's all good. Fantastic. Okay. You know what, Ian? Let's just troubleshoot. If we can't share screen, oh, are we going to? Let's just. Oh, there you go. Yay. We can see it. Okay. So we will. Um, you'll walk us through Campari and Everall. Perfect. Yep. Thank you. Uh, um, it's, I'm glad it went through. So apart from us being known as um, Campari Group or the Aperitif Group because of the uh, brands that we've been um, focused on or popular in the Philippines. Actually, we also have different brands under the umbrella or brands under the uh, spirits category. Like we have our own gin, tequila, rum. We also have like sparkling mm -hmm. wines, vodka, and whiskey under our portfolio, which is I won't go through in depth in the session, but just to walk you guys through one overview. And definitely about the, the, um, the perfect way of defining what we're having right now, um, just aligned to how we want to enjoy. You know, I, I really got tips in the beginning, and then eventually I started to taste all the different dishes you guys prepared. Thank you so much. It actually um, balanced out. Now. <laughs> As my tolerance for alcohol is very, very little. So honestly, about aperitifs, about aperitivos, um, we just want to we just want to put in context that uh, we 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 just want to have a build around of it, not just being the usual drink or beverage you have before a meal intake that helps you you know elevate, open up your appetite for your next meal. It's really about um, how it's enjoyed, how it's consumed. Like in Italy, it's really about the aperitivo session, which is very perfect for our timing right now. Um, I will really say. When you put in context together, like uh, we have all the dishes, we have you guys, our viewers, we have the apple, we have comparing the spritz all together, which is like a bolder way, um, a much 
much, you know, interesting and much way of how we want to say to people that this is really what aperitivo is. So it's not just a bittersweet Italian liquor in a bottle. It's really this social act, um, this social gathering that we have. Well, it's not face to face, but at least we still get to enjoy, you know, the spirit. I guess Michelle, Nadine, and Crystal, you have been enjoying like every single moment as you take a sip on your April Campari spritz as you pair it with the different dishes you guys prepared. It's actually what makes more, you know, gives essence more to, to that category of it being an aperitif or it being an aperitivo. So compared to other spirits in the category, like aperitifs are the are the beverages that you could not really, you know, say in context where it's made from. Like for grapes, you know, it's wine. When you say tequila, you go to agave. When you say gin, um, it needs to have juniper. When you say whiskey, uh, it needs to have different types of grains. Um, you know, when it comes to aperitivos or aperitifs, it's really about the botanicals. These are um, recipes that are really kept up to this moment. So ah. it really makes it unique amongst any other category because you just can't take every single botanical, you know, root, herb, define it, and really mm -hmm. say this is the most, you know, dominant um, herb or spice in the batch that is used to create the flavor of these great aperitifs. So that's, that's just a bit of an overview of how it's best to really, you know, categorize, really define, compare and Aperol together once people really ask you. Um, a bit about Aperol. So it was really inherited during the 1920s by two brothers. So we have Luigi and Silvio Barberi. And then um, a few years of development, research. In 1919 was actually the year where when April was actually um, introduced again by the brothers. So it's very, um, it, it was really popular because of it being only 11% of alcohol by volume. So it's really about the people who are concerned about, you know, um, taking very little intake of alcohol. Uh, it's aperitivo, so they don't really want to get, you know, drunk heavily right. with alcohol before in taking meals. And the good thing about the brand is it's really um, the color itself, orange, really represents like joy of life. And from the uh, the brand Aperol, it was actually Silvio Barbieri who who made the, the name uh, in context of the aperitif term in French, which is apero. So it was derived from the from the term apero and eventually named Aperol. So actually, Aperol, because it is orange, is also a great drink for Rapplers. <laughs> it's like a brand now that we can put together. <laughs> and it's really easier, you know, between the two, Aperol and Campari. Campari has more alcohol in it. Um, we're introducing, the, uh, uh, you know, a brand with different dynamics to the Philippine consumer. So sometimes it really would take a while if you're not used to it. But mm -hmm. I would really say the more you taste it, the more you experience it. It's really a drink that goes with experience. And, and it is a fantastic experience. I am enjoying my drink with all of you. Cheers. Chin chin. Absolutely. And I'm enjoying mine too with you guys. So a little bit more time to sip on it. And a really great, you know, in terms of um, the use of these brands is really about cocktails. Because sometimes um, the expression of flavor is really brought, brought to life more of how you could recreate, use the brand, express more of, um, of the tasting notes and make people enjoy it in a different way. So we have like, um, you know, a really globally known cocktail with Aperol, which is the Aperol Spritz, which is you guys could actually prepare on your own. If you have the ingredients, even at home, it's very, very easy to prepare. All you need to do is have your wine glass with you. And then just like us, since we have, we've been doing this for a while behind the bar, um, it's a two-way zone. If you have good quality ice, you can start with building the drink first. Uh, you first pour 60 mils of Aperol, and then you do 60 mils of your Prosecco. So and then one you do, is one. Yep. And then you, we could also say one is to one. It's actually um, how we want to promote it is equal parts of Prosecco and uh, your Aperol, and then a dash of your soda water. Don't forget to add a slice of your orange, orange. in it. Yep. I have orange so, in true. so if you're battling like with not good quality ice, I would suggest maybe you could start 
with the ice and then pour it over ice. Just stir it a little bit. Just make sure um, your working time is a bit faster than usual because you don't want to have, you know, the ice dilute and add more water into your cocktail. And then just don't, don't forget, guys, to give it a little bit of a stir. You might want to mix it up together. And then you get the perfect apple spritz. Fantastic. And I love my Aperol spritz. I've actually been drinking it the whole time. Okay. So <laughs> tell us about the videos. Well, actually, we can go ahead and roll the videos. And we can, I want to ask um, Nadine and um, Crystal how your Aperol spritz are. How are you guys enjoying? Are your Campari spritz, Crystal? Mine's really good. Go ahead, Crystal. <laughs> Yep. I discovered that it pairs, it actually pairs nicely with the spinach and goat cheese pizza. Ah, there you go. Time to begin to the pizza. <laughs> I love Lovely. drinks with a little bit of bitterness at the end. Um, and the Aperol Spritz has a tiny, tiny tinge of bitterness at the end. Probably not as bitter as Campari, right? Campari. Yeah. 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 So if you want to go bolder on the bitterness, a little bit more of long-lasting experience, you want to keep it really from tongue down to throat, I suggest you go with the Campari Spritz. If you want really something refreshing, more on the sweeter side, you go the Apple Spritz. Right. Right. And so the, the whole experience to this aperitivo, this is actually, would another name for this, Ian, be Happy Hour? <laughs> well, that's I think how we get used to it because if right. you look into the time of how we celebrate happy hour in the Philippines it's it normally falls down the usual aperitivo time as well okay. um, it's something that Filipinos don't really know but right. if we don't you know the way we celebrate after office we come down you know bars and restaurants what time 5 p.m 6 p.m you look for people to you know to, to come with you and then we always have the pollutant or we always have dishes side by side drinks so definitely it's it's a culture that we're all you know in some sort of a separate way but definitely we're there yes yeah so similar same same but not um in, in many ways right okay um let's see i think you had something else to share about campari but um do we have time for that do you can you tell us about campari as well yeah campari it's definitely really really quick so um, just aside from, you know, from Aperol, Aperol was derived from an inspiration. So Apero for Campari, it was really named after the founder. So I've just shared my screen. I don't know if you guys see it, but it was founded and, um, you know, the brand was founded in 1860. It was okay. named after our founder, Gaspar Campari. And it was really known to be the first of its kind, red liquor or red, red aperitif in Italy. So we would really say that um, without the brilliance of uh, Gaspari Campari, without that vision, that perseverance to create his own bitter Campari, then maybe I won't, I would have not been in the segment. I would have not met you guys. <laughs> and I would have not been, you know, the ambassador for the Philippines, like having people learn about it, having people learn about the experience. And that's something I'm happy about and looking forward to more things that we can do together. I just love his name. His name rolls off my tongue. Gaspari Campari. <laughs> yeah, and one more fact about it. Feels it. Wrong. <laughs> so one more fact about it. Uh, before it got his name as um, Bitter Campari, it used to be called uh, Bitter Huso de Holanda. Wow, I love all the, the trivia and the history behind each of these brands. Um, what stuck with me was the, the Aperol was 1919, right? So it's been around for almost 100, more than 100 years. It's 100 years. Mm -hmm. Aperol yep. was 100 years. Fantastic. Okay, so of course, we have another Quiz the Cook question. While you guys are noshing on your pizza, and of course, I was digging into the truffle pasta. The, um, the Ooh, truffle is that what it is? is? I'm going to yes. try this next. 
<laughs> it's triple mac and cheese. So Ian, I don't know if you've been digging in. You said you were a little tipsy, so let's have a little bit of food while, you, while we do the next question. Of course, Quiz the Cook, you guys know, sharing is caring. So make sure that you've shared the live stream, have it set to public so we can see. Up for grabs, we have from Premier Wines and Spirits. We have, of course, either an Aperol spritz kit or a Campari spritz kit that you will be receiving. You have fresh pasta from Nadine. You have Neapolitan style pizza dough from her as well. You have a, a box of sweet corn and ricotta agnolotti and a box of tagliatelle. From Chef Kin, you have limoncello tiramisu. From Ital Food, you have your own antipasti kit. From Mama Lou's, you get to go and visit Crystal and her team, of course, for a thousand peso gift certificate. And from the Philippine Italian Association, who has partnered with us for both Italian episodes, you get three months access to their e-learning platform should you want to learn more about culture, um, literature, music, anything that we love, of course, um, that is Italian. So remember that you must have a relative, a boyfriend, girlfriend, cousin. Um, you can even send it to your mother-in-law if you would like to do that uh, in Metro Manila. And you must be watching either from the Rappler or the Mama in Manila Facebook page and be the third person to comment, right? So it's one, four, three. Um, the third person to comment correctly will get to take home or enjoy all of these goodies that we're enjoying here on cam. Um, Crystal, would you mind reading our third quiz the cook question? Sure. Okay. So who is Mamadou and how many branches are there? Okay, so if you were paying attention, I have mentioned how many branches there are. Um, I mentioned it in passing when we were talking about it earlier. You guys know I try to trick you sometimes. Of course, I want you to be on your toes paying attention. I am a teacher after all, so we are learning new things and, of course, um, trying new things as well. So some of these recipes that we have shared, we wanna see you guys trying them. We wanna see you guys going out and visiting um, Mama Lou's and you know, be sure to tag us when you do receive your prizes. So there are, oh, I see some correct answers. So some of the others, I will read some of the other chats. Okay, while we were talking, Mark Ebo, who is a loyal viewer, has watched quite a few shows and even won quite a few prizes. Um, let's, he mentioned um, Pinoy spaghetti. So I love a good Pinoy spaghetti. That doesn't take anything away from my Italian loving roots, of course. Um, so how, how about you guys? Pinoy spaghetti, yay or nay? I'm with you, Michelle, and with with hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> with hot dog, pork barbecue, and fried chicken at birthday parties, yes. for sure. <laughs> Michelle, do you know that we created this um, sweet style spaghetti and we serve it in Mama Lou's? I did we not know her sweetie spaghetti. And Nadine, it's served with sausage. Yes. And, yeah. <laughs> Best so, of both worlds. Yes. I Ian, need to try that soon. Ian, Pinoy spaghetti, yay or nay? Oops, you're muted. You're muted. I actually add cayenne pepper to the usual uh, to the usual blend. So <laughs> my mom cooks uh, Pinoy spaghetti. What I do is I take that whole cooking and I put it on a pan again, add canned pepper, and I'm done. But it's definitely um, a go for me. So wow. you like it spicy. Ian yeah. likes it spicy. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so guys, comments, viewers, we want to hear. We know this is an Italian episode, and of course, we are um, talking about Italian food and highlighting Italian food, but go ahead and tell us, yay or nay for Pinoy spaghetti. We want to know. We want to know what you guys think, and I think we have... A winner. Okay, congratulations, Ashley Go. You answered correctly. Let's see where her answer is. They're going to flash it. I can't see her answer. Ashley Go answered correctly. Congratulations. 
you will win all of these prizes. Guys, did she, since the social media team said, I am sure that they she answered that Mama Lou is Crystal's mom and that there are 12 branches because I did mention that earlier. So um, this is, yeah, nope, nope, yeah. Ash, um, congratulations, Ashley. Uh, the first media team will be reaching out to you. So Crystal, I know we talked about, um, there are 12 branches open, but you do have um, some other, you do have something else up your sleeve for us. <laughs> yeah. For your, sorry, for chewing. <laughs> uh, sorry, I didn't mean to get you while you were chewing. So <laughs> I didn't mean, this is the hazards of having a cooking show and then eating and we're eating what and we're drinking. What a tough life. <laughs> <laughs> hazards. Okay, so Crystal, Tell us where people can come and visit Mama Lou's. Um, everybody now knows, of course, there are 12 branches they can come in. Um, and anything else new you have coming in the pop pipeline? Okay, um, I'm, I'm inviting everyone to come and uh, visit our home. And um, we are opening 12, um, 12 uh, restaurants. And uh, we're opening next month in uh, Venice, uh, in BGC, that's our first. And so I'm inviting you to feel a taste of my mom's cooking uh, that is prepared with lots of love and, of course, with um, our, the Filipino hospitality. So that is what Mama Luz is all about. And I hope to see you there for dine-in and, of course, for delivery. You can order by our uh, hotline. It's uh, hashtag 6262 or hashtag mama. And also uh, on our website, uh, mamafood.ph. There you go. And also on Instagram and Facebook, if they want to follow you for any specials or any upcoming things. Yes, of course. Uh, Instagram, it's mama underscore L-O-U-S. There you go. Thank you so much, Crystal. I look forward to coming in and seeing you and David. And um, of course, take care and I hope to see you soon. Thanks, Michelle, Nadine. And Thank I you. Me. Ian, where can um, everyone follow you if they wanna go see you? Cause I know you're a mixologist and you have like different places that you go to share with us how they can, how the viewers can follow you. And if they wanna see what's up with Campari or Aperol um, and you know, where they can avail of our lovely Aperol spritz. Yeah. So for, uh, for me, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. My handle is my full name, Ian James Asilo. We also have our brand pages, which is Apple Spritz PH and Campari PH. For Apparel, you can actually um, purchase that through SNR Supermarkets. Um, we also have our flagship store through the Southern Shopee. You can just check up Campari Group. We also have some partners like um, we have Liquid PH, we have Booz Online, um, we have Boozy PH. Um, you can actually access Campari and Apple and in a lot more of areas right now compared to before. Um, I, I remembered back in 2012, it was really a challenge, but now it's really getting along. So um, events, I also post on my personal um, Instagram page. Um, I'm more active on Instagram and Facebook. You check my stories, my wall post. Um, I'll be going to uh, La Union this Saturday. So if you guys want to do a Labor Day, I'll be in float some, serving some Apple Spritz and a few more events coming in the future. Fantastic. So guys, go ahead and follow Ian so you can see where he's going to be um, mixing. And of course, for the winners, you will get to mix your own Aperol spritz or Campari spritz. Ian, thank you so much for joining us, teaching us how to make our own spritz. And of course, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Cheers. And Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Ian. Okay, so let's welcome our last guest, our final guest for the day. Nadine, are you ready? Ooh, I'm excited for this one. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> let's welcome Chef Kin on cam. Um, we are so excited. Hi, Chef Rankin. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Uh, hi, hi, Michelle. Hi, Nadine. How have you been? Have you been enjoying your Aperol spritz? Yeah, I had quite a few already. 
<laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Just take the edge off, don't you think? Just a little it's bit. So it's so easy to drink. Way too easy. <laughs> It really is. So this is why I have to be very careful when we have drinks like this. I have to be able to, of course, have a conversation with everybody while we're chatting. <laughs> Chef Ken, tell us about um, the Italian dessert that you are sharing with us today. So I'm going to try mine also. Nadine, oh, if I have yeah. mine here too. Well, I've been staring at it. Uh, we're having right now is uh, the limoncello tiramisu. Uh, it's uh, my uh, my take on the or uh, addition of line for my uh, usual tiramisu that I was making. Uh, so it all started when uh, actually my wife and I are discussing about it. Uh, she suddenly thought about uh, incorporating limoncello in the, into a tiramisu. So uh, she pushed me for everything and then. Uh, one then uh, one an idea came to another then uh, after a series of R and D and everything uh, and giving it out to my friends and family then that's when we decided to uh, launch the limoncello tiramisu. Yes. Chef Ken, yeah. I love your wife. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I've never had a tiramisu like this. And it's so refreshing. It's so light. Yeah, I have. It's like a palate cleanser for you. For yeah. Yeah. It's so light. It's creamy. Um, it's just enough tart. It's not overly sweet. I don't like sweet desserts. This is yeah. probably why I love tiramisu. Tumor is not supposed to be sweet, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's so delicious. Even the the lemon on top, the lemon rind. Ah, perfect. I'm going to take another bite. And while I'm eating, Chef, do you want to show everyone how you make this delicious dessert? Sure. <laughs> Let's see. So first of all, uh, in, in the video, we'll be, I'll be showing you the uh, process for the thing of the there. So first of all, we need eggs. So we'll separate the egg, egg yolks and egg whites. And uh, oh. The egg yolks with sugar until it's like it's, uh, it turns pale yellow in color. Uh, we use, uh, for some Italians, they don't usually uh, cook the egg yolks, but uh, for safety reasons, uh, that's the reason we cook the egg yolks to prevent, to prevent salmonella from uh, happening. Yeah. Then, after that, uh, we'll fold the egg yolk, the egg yolk mixture with the mascarpone and the whipped cream. Then actually for, for that, uh, it's already done. But if you want a lighter texture for the tiramisu, you also can whip the egg whites and fold it in with a picture as well. Then lastly, uh, that's why we call it limoncello tiramisu. We'll add lemon curd. Uh, that's where we also mix in the limoncello for, for that uh, taste. Yeah. Then, for assembly, we also have a lemon challenge and lemon juice dip. Yeah, then we dip the saboyardi in the mixture. So uh, for dipping the saboyardi, uh, we don't dip it as much. So the saboyardi won't be too soft when you mm. Mm. So <laughs> there it is. And I am seeing a theme running behind all of these like different and brilliant ideas are wives. So yeah, Chef, yeah. you executed your wife's idea fantastically. Um, this really is the most delicious dessert, the most delicious tiramisu I've had. It is now my new fave. Um, we now know where we can get limoncello tiramisu. So. We do have two more Quiz the Cook questions. You guys don't have to fret. Don't worry if you feel that you were skipped over. Don't worry. We have two more. Again, remember, sharing is caring. We want everybody to have a chance to win. 
You must be watching either from the Rappler or the Mama and Manila Facebook page. We would love it if you shared. Remember that it should be set to public so we can see that you shared. And up for grabs, we have from Premier Wines and Spirits, a Campari spritz kit or an Aperol spritz kit. You also have fresh pasta from Made by Nadine, pizza dough as well. Chef Kin, of course, is sending over a limoncello tiramisu for you to enjoy in your own home and you will not want to share. Um, from Ital Food, we'll have an antipasti kit that you'll get to put together your own antipasti platter, platter for um, your family. You also have a Mama Lou's 1000 peso gift certificate that you can pick up in any of their 12, soon to be 13 locations. And you'll also have three months access to the Philippine Italian Association's platform where you can learn about music, um, literature, of course, off, you know, avail of translation services. And if you would like to take language lessons, you could do that as well. Okay, remember that the address this will be sent to will have to go somewhere in Metro Manila. So you can find a new bestie, could be your cousin, your, your sibling, your partner, or your boyfriend or girlfriend, and it could even be your mother-in-law if you would like to share that with her too. Um, Chef Kin, could you read, actually, I'll read this one. Um, and then Chef Kin, you can read number five for us. So what are the ingredients of an Aperol spritz? So Ian talked about this. He talked about um, how to make one. He even gave us percentages of like what should be in there. Um, so go ahead, guys, and give me the ingredients of an Aperol spritz. And while we are waiting for the winner, so you guys can go ahead and um, fill in the answers. Remember, this is the fourth question. So it's one, four, three, four, four. So fourth question is the fourth person to answer correctly. Chef Kin, of all of the Italian foods, of obviously you enjoy making tiramisu, what would be your favorite antipasto? Oh. It's a hard one. <laughs> That's the thing, right? How can you choose? There's that's the beauty of um, uh, <laughs> I must say, I, I like it simple, so maybe prosciutto with some salami and bruschetta also. Yeah. Yes, there you go. So we are all in the same company. It's hard to choose antipasti, you know. It really is. You're right, Nadine. Okay, <laughs> then we'll put you on the spot then and ask you what is your favorite pasta. Because we ask that of everyone <laughs> right here. Pasta. Uh, I'm a, I'm more of a carbonara guy. <laughs> yeah, okay. with the with the carbonara with the, with the guanciale and egg yolk. Yeah, yeah. And authentic. Yes, our Italian chef friends would be very proud. Of course, you're a chef. You know that it's guanciale. Of yeah. course, you do. <laughs> 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 okay, so for those of you that missed last episode, we did have Chef Paolo and Chef Alessandro come in and teach us how to make carbonara the authentic Italian way. And if you are interested in learning that, of course, like with all of the recipes that we share here in Kitchen 143, you can visit the column on Thursdays and see um, Chef Paolo actually shared a very simple recipe for authentic carbonara, which of course Chef Kin mentioned uses guanciale. So while you guys are, um, let's see, the viewers are not answering as quickly. Wait, let's see. Okay. I think we have a winner. We're just waiting for social media to put the social media team to confirm. And I am so happy um, to announce that we have, we can congratulate Jing Santos. Hi, Jing. She answered ooh, with the milliliter count, 60 milliliters of Aperol, 60 of Prosecco, soda water, ice, and an orange slice. Congratulations, Jing. The team will be getting in contact with you for you to enjoy all of your Italian goodies. And of course, so you can go ahead and claim your GC by visiting Mama Luz. Um, branches. Of course, that's all we have time for today. We would like for you to, of course, 
leave comments. Um, let us know, what do you want to learn about? Do you want to see more Italian dishes? Do you want to see, um, you know, other dishes? Do you have ideas? Are there other brands that you want to see, you know, teach us something new? Leave us a message. Um, and of course, let us know here on the Rappler or the Mama and Manila Facebook page. But wait, guys, of course, we still have one more question. We have one more quizzical question. We can't leave. Um, I am going to ask Chef Kin to read this. But before I do, I will tell you again what is up for grabs. And we're going to pan just so you can know, just so you can see again. This is the last question of the evening. Um, up for grabs, we have Campari or Aperol Spritz Kits. We have fresh pasta and pizza dough from Nadine. We also have the limoncello, the best limoncello tiramisu you will ever have. I know Nadine agrees with me. She's nodding very, very hard. Um, from Ital Food, you get an antipasti kit from Roberto and um, the fellas over at uh, Ital Food. Mama Luz, you get a GC you can claim in store. And of course, from the Philippine Italian Association, who's been our partner for both episodes, three months access to their e-learning platform where you can just go ahead and have fun learning about everything Italian there. Are you ready for our last question? They're ready because they were, they were. The question is, which Italian cheese is needed in making tiramisu? Okay, so if you were paying attention when Chef Kin was telling us about um, how to make it. He, he walked us through. I'm gonna take another bite. Um, and while you guys are figuring it out, it's the last question, the last time you can win for today. All of these Italian goodies. Let's see. Here they come. <laughs> the comments. We have lots of comments. This is the last question. So it's the fourth person to answer correctly. Chef Ken, I'm not sure if you're of my generation where you would know what 14344 means, because that's like actually beeper talk, right? Mm -hmm. we, had, yeah. we had beepers and we would, before cell phones, before cell phones, we would actually <laughs> talk and code through numbers. <laughs> Right, so one, four, three, four, four, um, obviously means I love you very much for you guys, you youngins who are tuning in, who, whose parents may not have shared that with you. Um, but if you were gonna say kitchen love, Chef Ken, who inspired you to get busy in the kitchen? Uh, just my grandma and my dad who actually inspired me to pursue a, a career in culinary, so. Yeah, it's it started from them actually. I'm watching them cook in the kitchen until now actually. So, yeah. oh, so they're still cooking. Are they still cooking? Do you guys cook together? Uh there are times that we cook together, but uh more it's more of a best of both like a yin and yang is uh my dad cooks usually cooks more of an Asian Chinese style rather than me. I mean. Uh, I usually cook uh, or I uh, Western and maybe a bit touch of French. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, so I'm glad that you can actually bring a little bit something a little bit different to the family table, right? I know for me, um, it's always been about bringing the family around the table, kitchen love, watching my kids eat something that was yummy that I knew they liked and that was still good for them as well has always been my pleasure. Nadine, what inspired you as we are wrapping up? What inspired you and, you know, to get into the kitchen and love culinary the way you do? Very similar to you. Um, I was inspired by my grandma, my Lola, actually, and my mom, who are both excellent cooks. Um, and they allowed me to help out in the kitchen. And, you know, there's really nothing like contributing to something and seeing people's faces kind of enjoy something you created with your own hands. So, yeah. Agree. And it's even better, I feel, when you have multi-generations in the kitchen together. Yes. I think like that's such, for me, even my grandma, if, even if my grandma didn't cook as much, my Italian grandmother didn't cook, it was apparently my Italian grandfather 
who cooked more of the Italian dishes. Um, but my mother, of course, being married to my father, you know, we would just have the generations, the titas, the aunties, the, the aunts, the godmothers who were all in the kitchen, chopping, cooking, preparing together. It really is the place, you know, the hearth, the home. It's really where the love comes out of the kitchen. So I, I think we have a winner. Um, here we go. So this would be the fourth person to answer correctly. Congratulations, Lemuel Francisco, who answered correctly with mascarpone. Great job, Lemuel. Be um, on the lookout because the social media team will be reaching out to you for your Metro Manila address so that all of our partners can send over their delicious goodies for you to try. Nadine, I can't wait to cook my pasta. We're actually going to shut down here and then I'm going to jump on and start cooking. But before we go, Nadine, where can people find you and how can they get your homemade pasta and your handmade pasta and your um, pizza dough? Pizza dough. Um, so just follow me on Instagram. I post usually weekly um, on every Sunday. Um, and then I post the dates that are going to be available for your pickups. Um, yeah, it's as simple as that. And I also post a lot of those really relaxing pasta making videos that Michelle was talking about. Um, and I hope you enjoy those too. They are super meditative. They're the kind of, you know, you when I'm scrolling at night before going to bed, you can just relax and and dream about pasta have pasta dreams <laughs> <laughs> i agree completely chef kin where can um tell us about the other products you're offering besides the limoncello tiramisu and how people our viewers can get them so for by chef yeah, for by for by chef kin uh, you'll be, uh other lines will be the classic tiramisu then we actually we started with uh, uh, ube pandesal and ube cream cheese pandesal. We also serve that. Uh, we also make cookies for you guys, butternut crinkles. Uh, there and the the strawberry sink cream also, which is uh, like a mascarpone with ganache with a straw homemade strawberry filling in the center. So That's you guys can. <laughs> Everything sounded so good. Exactly. I was going to say that all sounds delicious. It's a perfect way to end the episode with a little bit of sweets. And of course, we hope that you guys enjoyed our time, your time in our kitchens with us. Thanks for joining. We will see you again soon for the next episode where we will celebrate mothers. So thank you and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.